Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the red devil in fairy tale. Part 5. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. So your business was to find some guy named Lecter. Basically. Mira raised an eyebrow, isn't that mafia stuff or something? Uh, no, so why did you and your business partner attack him at all? That sounds pretty hitman to me. Well Lecter was always a terrible person, he killed a lot of people and a lot of special people close to me and my acquaintance A. Eh? After Malifa died he had no prejudice, anyone who even spoke to one of the musketeers got killed. Oh, that's disappointing, what else could she say? Fairy tale really had no affiliations with death, Naruto, however, did. You know what would be disappointing? Missing out on that Miss Fairy Tale contest, the roll of eyes, of course, you have your priorities straight. I always do. Oh man, I cannot wait. Gray glanced at him, you really are excited. Naruto gave him an evident look, why wouldn't I? This is what I operate on. You operate on looking at Elfman's sister. Naruto chuckled sheepishly, not even looking to Elfman who was sitting right next to him. So Natsu, Naruto started, I see you are interested in some more, different meat. Natsu continued to eat on what looked like pork chops. It's so good. The man walked onto the stage, the entire guild hall, which was filled with people from all over the nation, quieted down at the sight of him. Hello everybody. He yelled, it is I, Max, and I'll be the announcer of the Miss Fairy Tale contest. The crowd roared, ready to see the specialties. For the first contestant. With a stomach able to handle anything, Naruto raised an eyebrow at how that sounded, the exotic beauty, Kana Alberona. The crowd roared as she sauntered onto the stage. Now. Cast your magic. Naruto leaned back in his chair, oh this will be good. Hana brought up a card, and multiple cards spouted from her hands all around her, covering her entire body. And when they faded, she was in a bikini. She gave the crowd a wink. Hot damn. Naruto was impressed. She's so hot she makes Natsu look like an ice user. Hey. The slayer yelled. What does that mean? And now. She might be a newcomer, but her skills and looks are S-rank. Naruto elbowed Gray, your girl is up dude, you better get ready to go wild. She's not my girl. Naruto tutted, she's to you as Lucy is to Natsu. Face it. What is that supposed to mean? Natsu yelled again. She walked on and her eyes locked with Gray's. Naruto gave Gray I told you so look. Wow. Naruto said admirably at her performance, you gotta keep her Gray. We have nothing going on. Do you hear this? He asked Elfman, is he like Jason or something? She's calling his name and basically saying come take me and he doesn't want it. Elfman nodded, I don't think he's very manly, oh shut up. Max got back to center stage, now. The poster girl of the guild. One of fairy tales pride and joys. Whose beauty is no all throughout the continent. The lovely Marahin Strauss. Naruto and Elfman openly cheered loudly as she got on stage, smiling and waving happily. My forte is transformation, so I would like to do a transformation for my appeal. The crowd leaned forward in excitement, their face turned into happies. Bam. I am happy. I. The entire crowd froze for a moment before a single man's laughter broke through the deafening silence. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. Naruto collapsed laughing, holy shit the faces. Marahin turned into Gajiel, the laughter increased, these people look like they're gonna throw up. What? Elfman looked at Naruto appalled, did you know about this? No. Naruto was struggling to breath, but the sight of Gajiel's face on a sexy bod like Mira's is, is, he couldn't breath. He couldn't breath. Happy collapsed next to him, the two made eye contact, before looking to the Gajiel-fied Marahin, breaking into laughter once more. Gajiel looked absolutely mortified at the sight. Max practically shoved her off the stage, entry number four needs no explanation. The Titania, Urza Scarlet. The crowd bursted into applause, hoping Urza can fix the mental scarring Mira left, Naruto looked at the roaring men with pursed lips. Urza jumped on the field, looking as cool as always, I'm gonna show you a special armor. In a show of power she changed, oh hell no. Naruto roared at the side of Urza, you bastard stop leering my sister. What is wrong with you being so blatant? The Naruto. Gray tugged him down from being on top of the table yelling, that's a bit hypocritical since you were just leering blatantly. Yes, I am a hypocrite. Naruto looked to Elfman, how do you manage with people constantly looking at your sister? I chose missions where you can smash the most stuff. Elfman replied, knowing exactly how it felt. Well I'm gonna go backstage. Why? Naruto stood up to congratulate Mira for the hilarious performance and tell Urza to quit immediately. He started to walk away, oh and Natsu, make sure you cheer for Lucy really loudly, she liked that. Hmm. Um. Gray watched as Naruto walked away, he thinks he's a matchmaker or something. Oh why? Gray looked at Natsu, clueless as always, it's nothing, he looked at the stage, evergreen. 
Lucy was turned into a statue before their eyes. It's for the festival, Evergreen said slyly as the curtains raised, revealing the entire participants and Naruto turned into statues. In three hours they crumble. Laxus appeared next to her smirking. Makarov looked outraged, Laxus. What is this? This, he gestured to the statues, is a game. Us against you, to spice up the festival. This is out of line. He yelled back to his grandson. Laxus ignored him and zapped the approaching Natsu, all of Magnolia is the battleground, and as Evergreen said, you have three hours to get all of us. Yushu an arm suddenly draped over his shoulder. Hi Laxus. Naruto said cheerfully, haven't seen you in a while my man. Are those new headphones? I didn't notice them last time. Laxus froze while his group stared wide eyes. Naruto smirked at the sight, his acting was on par, along with his transformation. What? Evergreen yelled wide-eyed, how are you fine? Whoever uses their eyes to look into mine turns into stone. I saw you look directly into my eyes. Naruto chuckled, a deep malicious laugh, well Evergreen, these aren't my eyes, I'm borrowing them from a friend. His tone was low, so only the Thunder tribe could hear, so Laxus, what is exactly happening here? Laxus somehow found his composure, a simple game Naruto, I'm hoping you can play also. Naruto shrugged and took a step back, alright then, I'll entertain you. Though, his eyes turned an evil red, I'm not very happy with what you did to my sister. In a flash of lighting the group disappeared. Naruto. Makarov yelled, why didn't you stop him? Another shrug, eh. I'm a bit confused with what happened. Besides, a dark grin, I like games. Balzac ran out, the others following his lead. Makarov tried, only to hit an invisible wall. Naruto walked up to Makarov and Gray, so what's the deal with those words? He looked at the floating red words. Those are Freed's runes, a set of rules that must be followed no matter what. It says that statues and all people over 80 can't go through. Oh. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, I guess I can't join. Huh? Why? Gray asked. Naruto shrugged, I'm about 380. 400. I'm not quite sure at the moment. Gray stared shocked. It's complicated. Gray took a step back, it sounds very complicated, I'm gonna leave now. He ran away. I scared him off didn't I? Natsu ran towards the wall and smashed face first into it. Naruto blinked at the sight, oh hi Natsu. The wall started to show words, Alzac against Jet against Droy, a battle royal. Makarov growled, he's making us fight each other. Elfman lost. Damn that evergreen has a lot more than looks, maybe I should cast her for my movie, Naruto tapped his chin thoughtfully, she'd go good with Ikagura. Grey is fighting Bixlo. I want to join, Natsu whined. Naruto read the wall, oh there goes Riedis, shame, he seemed pretty nice. Why aren't you worried? The cry from Happy. Natsu looked untroubled, it's just a bluff, the girl's turning into dust. Is it? A new voice, the form of Laxus appeared, a thought projection. Why are you still here Natsu? I can't get out. Naruto raised a hand into a wave, hi again Laxus. Laxus gave him a glance, his own way of a greeting, before looking at his grandfather, with Natsu and Urza unable to fight it seems like nobody can beat my group. What about me? And Naruto also cannot, Laxus fixed. Do you want to surrender old man? What about Grey? Happy yelled, he's as strong as Natsu. He won't be beaten. As strong as me. That guy. Naruto looked at Natsu and chuckled, Natsu and Grey reminded me a lot like Lee and Niji back in the day. Not a and Sasuke since Grey doesn't have a death hickey or major problems other than ignoring Juvia. Grey? Laxa said with an eye roll, I wouldn't raise my hope for a guy like him. Makarov gritted his teeth, don't underestimate Grey, Laxus. Naruto looked at the blonde, yeah. He agreed, never underestimate a male stripper. I lost a toe to one of them before. He noticed the looks he got, it's very very complicated. A good drinking story actually, the barrier shimmered, Grey was defeated. 28 participants available. Oh. Well I guess Grey isn't fully trained as a stripper yet. Wait. Happy had a realization, Gagiel. Laxus laughed, he's not doing anything, I guess he doesn't care about this guild as much as you thought. What would you do old man? Makarov stared at the explosions coming from the city, enough, he turned around. I surrender Laxus. That's not enough. The master of fairy tale cannot go surrendering in times like this. But if you insist how about you give the title to me. Oh wow, Naruto gave a did not expect that and damn that's cheap chuckle, that's dirty Laxus, real dirty. Call me old fashioned, but a fight seems more appropriate. Laxus kept his eyes locked onto Makarov's, there's an hour and a half until the statues crumble. If you want to retire do it on the loudspeaker so the entire town can't hear. All you need to say is I'm transferring leadership of fairy tale to Laxus. Naruto didn't want to mention that it wouldn't be official until they went to the magic council and legally assign him leadership as every legal guild needed to do. 
And since the council was currently disbanded, it would take at least three months minimum for an actual request to be processed. Makarov surely knew that, right? Laxus grinned, what is more important? Your position or your friends? Naruto saw the expression on Makarov's face. Yup, he didn't know. Natsu lunged at the thought projection, with little effect other than making the image disappear. I do not mind giving up the position. But Laxus is too weak in heart to lead this guild. I cannot put fairy tale in his hands. But the ever-growing reality of the statues was an issue. Suddenly Gajil appeared from behind the bar counter, chewing on a metal cup. Gajil don't eat the tableware. Makarov looked at him hopefully, are you gonna help? Gajil walked towards the door, sure. I got a bone, to pick with him anyways. He then smashed into the invisible wall. What? Natsu roared, you're over 80 also. No. The wall glowed, Alzac is down. Only three remaining. Only three Makarov roared. What about us? Happy also yelled, knowing he wasn't included. We're doomed if they're the only ones left. Makarov pointed to the arguing Gajil and Natsu. Natsu looked at the stage, well I guess I need to revive Urza then, a shame since I really wanted to one-up her. They followed, what does that mean? Makarov asked. Natsu's hand caught fire, I can burn the stone off right. No. You can't Natsu laid the Urza statue down, Makarov turned to Naruto, Naruto you can't let this his jaw suddenly dropped. Naruto. The redeed was sleeping on a table. No wonder he was quiet the last few minutes. Okay. Natsu yelled, his hands catching fire. Let's rub her with ease. His arms approached her chest. Agile gave him a bland look, that's really pervy of you. Suddenly the statue cracked at his touch. Oh no. Natsu yelled, I broke Urza. Shit. Happy get the glue. Glue won't help. Gajil's arm turned to steel, melt my iron we can weld her back together. Makarov cried tears of fuck my life. War cracks appeared on Urza. Natsu started to bow rapidly please. Please I'm sorry Urza. Naruto, amidst the screaming, got up and yawned. Walking over to his sister, oh. He noticed something, he cocked his foot back and kicked Urza's statue. What are you doing? He looked at them strangely, what? I can help my sister can't I? They looked down to see a perfectly fine Urza. I she looked down, I feel a heat she growled, what did you do Natsu? Whoa whoa whoa. Naruto grabbed her shoulder, where do you feel a heat? What did he do to you? Urza got up angrily, Nastu must have touched my breasts with his fire, what? Naruto glared, what did you do to my adorable little sister? No 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 no. I didn't do any Natsu blinked in surprise, you're alright Urza. She moved her leg experimentally, apparently. How are you okay Urza? Makarov asked. Naruto draped an arm over her shoulder, her eye. My eye? Same with me. Naruto's eyes flashed red for a moment, both my eyes aren't mine and aren't attached properly. If it was Kakashi then Evergreen's magic would still fully affect him, but Naruto switched eyes regularly, so they weren't fully attached. And since the magic is through eye contact, it didn't travel through my eyes into my body. Urza's right eye is artificial, so the magic only traveled through one eye, having the magic transforming her. You knew this the entire time? Nope. He said while popping the pee. I just thought of the theory now, of course it's correct. When am I wrong? Happy flew by him, Naruto your arrogance is showing. Oops. Sorry. Urza nodded, I think you're right. I could still hear voices. The wall flashed, remaining participants, four. It went up. They walked to the door, Urza looked at the rune. Since I'm back it seems like the number went up. Number of participants, five. She raised an eyebrow, oh. Naruto chuckled, oh man. Misty is in town. He could sense him. Makarov smiled, his hope returning, really. I just said it didn't I? What are you talking about? Gajila asked. Urza smirked, one who could be called the strongest of fairy tale, one of our S ranks Mystigan. Naruto smirked also, me, him and Laxus are part of fairy tale's strongest team, the three amigos. Three, amigos. Well, Naruto looked thoughtful, the team might change with how rebellious Laxus is being at the moment, this is rebellious. I consider this insane. Naruto ignored him, where is the bum by the way? It's been a while, since I last saw him, his mission has been over for a while now, bum? Makarov turned to Gajil for only a moment Gildert's Clive. Oh. He knew the name, everyone knew the name. I need to go, Urza said, time is running low. Naruto ruffled her hair, good luck kiddo. I don't need luck. I have skill. She ran out. Naruto smiled, ain't she the cutest little thing. Gajil looked at her running form, I would say terrifying. That's what makes her so cute. Urza against Evergreen, winner Urza. That was fast, Makarov noted. It was faster than the wall could even say they were fighting, that's my girl. The statues glowed. Battle of fairy tale? Lucy questioned. 
Laxus would do this, Kana didn't look too shocked, she picked up the bottle next to her and admired it, this is good stuff Naruto. He smirked, Kumo Vodka. Great shit. What will we do with Laxus? Mira questioned, he can't get away unscathed. Biska nodded in agreement. Makarov had a gleam in his eye, oh don't worry. I'll show him. Wait. Natsu called, there's nothing wrong with trying to find out who the strongest is, is there? Huh? Natsu smiled, the Yuzumaki Naruto trademark smile, I'm just saying there's no need to be too harsh on him, old man. Naruto couldn't help but smile at the man, he was a hell of a guy. Now. Natsu declared, Battle of Fairy Tale Round 2. Eh? Uh, no. Makarov did not want his new guild building to be ruined. Hana downed the last of the vodka and shrugged, I wouldn't mind going a few rounds. Lucy gave her a dry look, you wouldn't mind drinking a couple of rounds. Happy flew by Natsu, you shouldn't go around picking fight with girls. Why? Girl or boy doesn't matter. There you go. Naruto slapped Natsu on the back, that's it. Even if you don't think it always say that boys and girls are equal. That's how you get places, because those feminists are fucking insane. Huh? Nothing. Just life advice. Oh. This guild is fucking crazy, Gajil declared. Naruto looked at him, better than Phantom with cross-dresser Ose. That guy had the fashion sense of an, of an albino peacock with AIDS. Agil and Juvia just stared. What? You know it's true. Then, the runes on the entrance started to travel in the air, a multitude going into the center of the room, where a shape stared to form. A giant red skull made of runes. Can you hear me old man? The voice of Laxus came from it. Apparently a thought projection wasn't enough. Naruto pointed at it and laughed, it has hole in the shape of Laxus's scar. That's a good one. If Laxus heard he ignored, I am activating the Hall of Thunder. Hall of Thunder? Makarov seemed shocked. One hour and ten minutes. Do you think you can defeat us, or are you gonna retire? With an ominous chuckle the skull vanished. Damn it Laxus taking innocence into th Makarov clutched his chest and collapsed. Oh shit. Was it a heart attack? Was his blood pressure too high? Oh no he needs his medicine. Marahin rushed away to get it. Boy get away. Naruto pushed away the crowding people and placed a hand to Makarov's chest, a green glow started to emit from Naruto's hand. What is that? Biska asked. Healing magic. Natsu leaned towards the master, what is Hall of Thunder? Mira rushed down the stair, look outside everyone. People rushed out to the balcony. Naruto took some medicine from Mira, hey Makarov, you alright? His tone was gentle, not wanting to upset an already weak heart. The guild master groaned, whatever you're doing Naruto, keep it up. But well, I can't do it forever so take your meds. They're floating around the town. Naruto walked out onto the balcony, what are? Levy looked at him, Thunder Lacrima. No it's not. Huh? Naruto cleared his throat, if it is thunder then it isn't as harmful. Thunder is only a byproduct from the release of energy from lighting, only a sound. So unless he's trying to deafen us, wait never mind, because to make thunder you need lighting. So I guess it can be called Thunder Lacrima, but lighting is scientifically correct. Hana just shook her head, sorry Naruto, but your smartest attempt failed. Yeah that was bad. Magical lacrima filled with lighting, Levy started, all around Magnolia. Wait. Lucy pointed at them, what will happen if they're discharged? Ain't it obvious? Naruto didn't look pleased, Laxus will destroy Magnolia. Iska growled I won't let that happen. She pulled out her sniper rifle, lock on. She fired, her shot hitting and destroying the lacrima. Odd job Biska. She smirked, and then was hit by a giant bolt of lighting. Iska? Lucy yelled in shock. Naruto lunged forward and grabbed her wrist, sticking his fingers into the air, lighting shot out of his extended fingers into the distance. Iska groaned on the ground. Naruto's eyes narrowed at the sky, I redirected it out of your body, so you wouldn't be scarred or permanently damaged. It seems like the lacrima will strike whoever destroys it, he eyed Biska, someone get her to medical. Wait. Levy yelled, runes are a form of written magic, I might be able to decode it and make a workaround. Naruto, who was now the unspoken leader from his actions, nodded, taking charge. Do it quickly, Natsu go get something to eat. You're gonna need all the energy you need. Really? The clone appeared next to him in a puff of smoke, when Levy gets the work around this guy will shoot a large amount of fire at you. Not as much as the one from Phantom, but enough to get you going. Natsu nodded, right. We'll show Laxus. Levy how close are you? I'm working. Can you work faster? Hey. Gajil yelled to him, she's doing the best she can. Naruto rose an eyebrow, got a crush or something. He turned back to Levy, will coffee or something help? Because I have an ultimatum that I really don't want to use. Levy sighed, no. I'm trying Naruto. An explosion. Ixlo against Lucy. What? Natsu yelled. Naruto sighed very audibly, no choice then. His eyes turned purple. 
in the center of the stage the ground suddenly turned dark, so dark the color black couldn't even begin to describe it. Slowly a strange thing popped out, it looked like a giant head with a ceremonial headgear with a strange symbol on it, the head was a stark white with a purple ringed eyes. What is that? Levy asked in fear. Naruto gave her a glance, revealing his eyes to be the same, the king of hell. He made his way towards it. King of, hell? Levy and Gajil could only stare as Naruto walked up and conversed with it. Gajil's arm was metal, just in case. After a few minutes and a heated argument Naruto came back up, it's decided. What is? The king pardoned me to use a forbidden technique, I can now use it without being damned for eternity. What? Let's just say I owe some gods favors. He created a wood clone, you know what to do. The clone stood still and was suddenly dragged into the ground. Ito Tensei. What? Agile took a step forwards, so he was in front of Levi. Natsu was watching from the main entrance. The coffin that appeared in the clone's place slowly opened, a figure fell out. I, what? Niji. The newly revived Neju Hayuga looked at Naruto alarmed, Naruto, what happened? I'm sure you know that I'm not dead yet. Yes. Well I used Ito Tensei to revive you, everyone else is too old. Niji did die during the war, everyone else he really knew lived to their 90s or longer, a byproduct of when he put his chakra into their systems. Niji blinked in astonishment, Ido, Tensei. The king of hell let me. The king was the only death deity he could summon, Naruto conversed with the Shinigami and other gods through him. Niji took a few moments to comprehend, why did you call me? Is there anything you need? There's an issue in this place, everybody over the age of 80 cannot go past a barrier, and a friend of mine is in trouble. I need you to help her. Anything for you? She's a girl with a flying cat with her. Fighting a man with strange heads following him. It would be easy to find with the Byaku gone. Got it. Niji went to the main entrance, Natsu took a step away. Oh and Niji. Naruto called. Niji stopped and looked back, yeah. Thank you. And it's good to see you. Naruto turned to see everyone staring at him, what? Everyone went back to what they were doing. You can destroy my dolls, but you cannot destroy the souls that control them. I have all the bodies I need inside of this toy shop. Now get them babies. Green lasers shot out of the dolls towards Lucy, who cradled happy and ducked. Hayton. Smoke enveloped them, Lucy looked up after a few moments, she was alive. Are you Lucy? A voice asked. She saw a man, who looked around 17 or 18. Long brown hair and pale lilac eyes, around his eyes the veins were bulging out of his skin. Who are you? I am Niji Hayuga, a good friend of Naruto. He asked me to help you. Good, another new voice. Let's go. Lucy recognized it, Loke. The Leo smirked, appearing in his new suit, I heard you were in trouble, so I came. He glanced at Niji, though I was almost too late. Thank you Niji. He nodded, do not worry. Ixlo laughed maniacally, two more. Well we can take them can't we babies. Lucy looked at her spirit, how did you get here Loke? Loke adjusted his glasses and smirked, it seems like I have the power to travel through the celestial gates without you summoning me. Because the power of our love is too much. Love, Ixlo chuckled, so you are a celestial spirit Loke. I knew it. Loke glared, you hurt my owner. I cannot let you get away with that. Niji looked at Lucy, you get cover. We got this. Lucy and number 5 air air. Unknown. Naruto smirked, that asshole doesn't know who Niji is. Lucy and Niji against Bixlo. What? Naruto's eyes narrowed on the wall, he has listening runes in the wall. What? Niji eyed the unmasked Bixlo, a dejutsu, don't look happy yelled. Niji deactivated his Byaku gone and closed his eyes, his Dejutsu allowing him to look through his eyelids. All of the Thunder God tribe have secondary eye abilities, Evergreen uses her as a primary though. Bixlo's allows him to control whoever looks in his eyes like a puppet. Bixlo chuckled, it doesn't matter, since I already got you. Lucy looked confused, huh? Before she froze, oh no. Loke stood up, his eyes green. Loke and Bixlo against Niji and Lucy. Fuck. Levy. Almost. Niji ducked underneath Loke's glowing fist. Jumping away towards Lucy. Lucy I need you to get to cover. I can't fight Loke and the dolls while protecting you. Will you be alright? Just go. Happy grabbed her shoulders and flew off. Oh now you don't. Bixlo yelled, his dolls chased after them. Niji kicked Loke in the stomach, sending him flying back, before facing the dolls, eight trigrams, vacuum palm. His palm thrust was so powerful it shot a blast of air out, smashing into a doll. He fired a few, his aim impeccable. As he destroyed the last one he ducked, Loke's fist flew over him into the ground, destroying the floor. Niji flipped back and narrowed his eyes, what to do? He got a thought, it was kinda like Tayuyu of the Sound 4, she controlled her own dolls with her flute, but if you take the leader, and like Kabuto, once he was defeated the Ido Tensei all went away. 8 Trigrams. Mountain Crusher. 
He needed Loke out of the way, hopefully the spirit was tough enough to handle that. After Loke was smashed away Niji jumped high in the air towards Bixlo. Bixlo jumped out of the way from the initial strike, but Niji rolled back into his feet and lunged towards him, poking him twice in the face. Huh? Bixlo collapsed, I can't see. What did you do? Niji smirked as Loke fell down, the one weakness of a long distance fighter, they often neglect their close quarter skills, you aren't in shape physically, way too slow. And I hit the pressure points in your eyes, you're blind for the next five hours. What? Blind. Not seeing isn't what you should be scared of, Loke said as he approached, actually you should be thankful, you won't see your defeat coming. Niji and him locked eyes, are you good now? Niji asked. Thanks to you. Thank you. We are allies. Of course. Loke turned to Bixlo, who was on his knees, take this. He glowed brightly, Regulus impact. Winner, Lucy, Loke, and Niji. Oh fuck ya. Yeah. Natsu jumped in excitement, they got him. Them and Naruto gave each other a high five. I got it. Levi yelled. Naruto smirked, oh hell yes. The clone tapped Natsu on the shoulder, you ready? I'm always ready for a meal. You better be, because this will be big. The wall started to fade. Great fire destruction. Naruto's head snapped towards the north, what is this this feeling? It feels kin to evil. He smirked. And soon chuckled. But because I'm in an evil mood today Kurama. What? The fox asked, just returning from Naruto's takeover. I'm in a really, really deadly mood today, his sister turned to stone, the beauty pageant ruined, Makarov having heart issues, using Ido Tensei, his secrets being released, he was upset. Version 1. Yes, version 1, hot damn. Warahin and Freed both stopped fighting, both looking to the source of unbelievable evil. Is that you Mira? She growled, who are you? The black figure appeared, completely black with red spots on it, five tails sported from its back and swung ominously. It's me, Naruto. The strange energy went away, revealing the redeed underneath. Naruto. Levi got away out, and I felt something here. It must have been the absolute sexy coming off of you. Naruto blatantly started at Marahin's outfit, oh that is nice, real nice. Naruto not now. The dark laugh, now's the best time, because you definitely don't dress like that at the bar, damn that lipstick looks nice. Is something up with you? Well you see Mira, you're not the only one with a demon, and mine is much, much worse. Who are you? Freed demanded. Naruto glanced at him, his eyes red and feral, oh. You are one ugly ass demon, I want to be alone with Mira, Began. I said who are you? Naruto growled, I'll make you go away. Oh and I'm the red devil Bijudama was too much, he didn't want to level the country Bijuu destruction wave. Die. At the first glimpse of power both Marahin and Freed tried to fly away, Mira managed to get behind Naruto, but Freed, Freed was the target. And he wasn't going to miss. Naruto is really beating somebody's ass. Niji said as he looked at the explosion in the distance, his body crumbling, he let go of the Ido Tensei. That Lucy pointed to the giant explosion, was Naruto. He's holding back immensely too. Niji said with pride. Pride of being friends with someone so powerful. Amazing, yes, he's amazing. A glow emitted from him. Lucy looked at him alarmed, are you alright? The technique used to bring me here is wearing off, I'm going home now. Oh, Niji gave her a nod, a pleasure to fight with you. Niji thank you. Thank you so much. Naruto stood over the downed Freed, you're lucky. Despite saying die I wasn't aiming to kill you. But nonetheless, good job on surviving, you're actually pretty strong to still be intact. Warahin flew behind him, are you going to finish him? No. Naruto turned to look at her, oh my god you look so, he shivered, oh man, I'm glad you didn't do that at the contest, I'm the only one who gets to see you like this. Mira glared, who are you? Huh? I'm Naruto. Don't think I couldn't hear you. I heard what you called yourself. Yes. And I'm still Naruto. You said Red Devil. And the Red Devil is me, Naruto. Are you how could you lie? Before he could answer Freed yelled at him, how? Why is the Red Devil part of fairy tale? I asked to join. How do you just sit there and drink and laugh? How could you? Because even though I'm the second biggest criminal in existence, I'm still a human. How can you have friends? How can you have comrades? Naruto bent over, ignoring Marahin, you know how, because everyone in fairy tale are comrades. No. Laxus is my only comrade. Do you really think that? When I was alone, when I needed someone, Laxus was there to help me. Give me purpose, I would have never joined fairy tale, if it wasn't for him. He's my only comrade, my only friend, look. A long time ago I met a boy named Gara. He was a secret weapon for an invasion plotted on my village. Why are you telling me this? SHH. Anyways, he was always alone since he had a deadly demon inside of him. 
Everyone was scared of him and constantly tried to kill him, his own father sent assassins, and when we met, everyone else saw a demon, but I saw myself. I saw a boy alone, a boy who had to become a man all by himself. He looked into the clear sky, not a cloud in sight. And after our battle was over, when we lied on the ground both powerless, I told him. And call this a paraphrase. I told him I knew the pain of being alone, that he wasn't the only one. I knew how it felt, to be rejected, to be hated. That the pain of being alone was the worst thing to feel. And I told him, that I understood him, that he wasn't the only one who's been through terrible things. Freed just stared. Freed. I understand, we can all understand. Fairy tale is more than a guild, it is a family. That guild mark on you hands is a brand, a brand for life, that you will always have a home. A sign that there will always be a family by your side for the rest of your life. Naruto laughed weakly, 12 year old him was really coming out. Naruto held his hand towards Freed, we're family. So get up, no matter what goes down with Laxus he'll be family also. We never let out family down here in fairy tale. Fairy tale is, love. Freed, in tears, took Naruto's hand. I never wanted to do any of this. I know. But think about the positive, after the body fights off a poison it grows more resistant to it. We fought back mutiny in our family, now we're even closer and more resistant to being separated. They stood there for a moment, before Freed's injuries took him into sleep. I should call you bipolar, one minute you're all bloodthirsty and evil, the other you're all caring we all love each other, Naruto turned to look at the normal Mira, I was merely telling the truth. And now you tell me the truth. What is there to tell? I am Naruto Namikaze, called the Red Devil by the government because of my hair, also called the Yellow Flash by the government because of my hair. Yes I know Zeref and he's actually a really nice guy, and no, I am not a mass murderer. Zeref is, but only by accident. And that business you went on a few days ago. Is Acnologia. We went to kill an evil dragon named Lecter. Can you even call someone evil with who you are? Yes. Because I'm just any other human, I can be good, and I can be bad. You know this, you've seen both. Aimira closed her eyes, I understands the words you said to Freed, we are family. She smiled at him, you're still the alcoholic flirt named Naruto. You got it wrong, sexy alcoholic flirt. Of course. They both chuckled before Naruto looked to his side, Elfman and Kana are coming, can you keep a secret? Yes I can. Though you now owe me a pretty big favor, you actually came. Jell, I would like it if you called me Mistigan. Laxus laughed, really? Fine then. There's a lot of rumors about who's the strongest in the guild, me or you, Mistigan. Well I think Gildertz is stronger. So is Naruto. Gildertz spends months on end away. He doesn't deserve to be part of the guild he's never at. And Naruto. He doesn't try. He'd rather go off and enjoy all the fine woman and wine of the world than save a dying guild. And Urza. Potential, but still weak. Then you must be godly to say Urza is weak, she might be as strong as I am. I'm trying to compliment you Mistigan. The strongest member of the actual fairy tale is one of us. I still say Naruto. You're trying to anger me. Is it working? No. Well then stop with all of this. I won't. We are part of a team together, so one last time, stop. Laxus shook his head, just fight me Jell. I don't know what's going on, Natsu declared as Mistigan, who was apparently Jell, disappeared, but I'll deal with it later. Urza, he turned to his friend, I can handle thigh his words fizzled out, are you okay? Urza stood petrified. Unable to move at the sight of Jell, or what was apparently Jell. Natsu? Natsu saw Naruto place a hand on Urza's shoulder, can you handle Axis, while I talk to her? Don't worry. Oh? You're sicking Natsu on me? Fight me yourself Naruto. Naruto glared, and the temperature dropped into the negatives, shut the fuck up, please. Laxus froze, he was playing with a sleeping lion, there was no need to poke it for no reason. I'm gonna beat your ass. Natsu lunged. Hey girl, how you doing? Urza stayed silent. Naruto sighed, you saw Mistigan's face didn't you? You, you knew. I know something, but probably not what you are thinking. She took a deep breath, before her eyes narrowed dangerously at her brother. Is. Mistigan. Gel. Yes and no. What? He's Jell, but not Jell. Tell me. Naruto tried to find out how to explain it, so you know how there was Jell and Seagrain. She nodded, but her glared remain. Well there is a third Jell, but this one isn't a thought projection or anything. The clone. No. A Jell from an alternate dimension. Alternate, dimension. It's complicated. You say that a lot. The shrug, because it's always complicated. I still don't get it. You don't have to, right now the only priority is beating the shit out of Laxus. Right. She ran away, but turned back to look at him, aren't you coming? I need to help someone, they need it. For Yusha, good to see you again. It is not good to see you again Naruto. Naruto snorted, that's what I get for being nice, why are you here? 
Naruto gestured to the sleeping Makarov, same shit as last time, this time the old man really is gonna die. He needs Laxus. I know. We can't fix a broken heart, but I can try to soothe his pain to make him last longer, change his dreams to distract him from the hurt of his family. Poor Lusha glanced worryingly at Makarov, can you really? You two were on a team right? Yes. Naruto sat down next to Makarov's bed, place your hands on my shoulders, and channel the best memories you guys have together. I'll put it in his head, hopefully he can last a few hours like this, Natsu will have finished up by then. All of the intense fighting outside, the climax is happening, and you don't want to be a part of it. I'm leaving it to the others, I trust them. He felt a flash of power, all of the lacrimas being destroyed. Actually, I don't. They're all idiots. Massive idiots. He rested. His eyes opening only to watch his slayer fight. He never really gives up does he? A feminine voice, he looked to see a blue energy by him. Brandini. Always fighting, much like someone else. His eyes narrowed, what are you doing here? He always fights so hard, he almost died. He caught the meaning, you cannot interfere. You dare say that my slayer needs help to me. To the great Igneal. Wow. A new voice chimed in, it's that time of the month for Igneal apparently. Boo. Igneal caught sight, Naruto. Naruto waved, so I was healing Natsu, and I sensed that Grandini came inside of him to chat, so I also came to say hi. Hi Naruto. Grandini was always friendly with him. Naruto nodded to her, before looking back to Igneal, you chose one hell of a person to learn your magic. I chose only the best. Grandini flew by the redeed, oh you should see my little Wendy. Adorable. I hope I do, I'm a sucker for the cute ones, Naruto rubbed the back of his head, well I'm gonna go now, if I'm in here and Natsu wakes up he'll realize that the great Igneal is stuck inside of him. And that Grandini comes over for tea. Leave human. Igneal yelled with venom. Wow. That makes me want to cry. Sarcasm was dripping from his words. See you Grandini, see you Igneal. I'm glad the guild is okay. Urza said as she examined the laughing people. But all the laughter stopped when the door opened. Laxus walked in, bandaged, defeated, and with only one thing on his mind. Where is the old man? He asked quietly. Laxus, a random voice. What is he doing here? Another, people started to crowd around, hostility emanating from them. Laxus. A yell. Naruto ran into the guild and his eye lit up at the sight of him, it's good to see you up L. He draped his arm over Laxus's shoulder and started to walk him over to the bar, seemingly unaware of the atmosphere involving the traitor. Naruto, Laxus sounded resigned. What are you doing? Trying to chat with a friend. We're three amigos right. Well Mystigan isn't here, but that's just because you unmask him and he's shy. Anyways he shoved a drink in Laxus's hands, I realized why you dress so strangely. Strangely? The shiny leather pants. They are completely out of style. Laxus just blinked, confused. Well they are insulated, so when you go all Zeus mode and smite everything your pants don't burn off. A brilliant idea, you do not know how many times I set my pants on fire and had to fight naked, when it's a girl it's fine, but one time there was this one dude, he shivered. You just noticed I wear these because they're insulated? I thought everyone could infer it. Laxus, you pull those off surprisingly well. I just thought you were trying to pull off the rockstar look. And if I thought that, then others thought worse. I, I really need to see the old man. Well I want to drink. Later, I promise. Okay. I'm holding you to it. So where is he? Naruto pointed, in the medical hall. I'm gonna go flirt with Mira now. Thanks, bye. Wait. Naruto grabbed his shoulder and leaned in to whisper in his ear, no matter what happens, you will always be an amigo, a friend. If you need help. Thanks Naruto, I really mean it. Thank you. After Laxus went into the room Naruto noticed the looks he got, what? I can't talk to one of my teammates anymore. He, he what? It's not like he killed anyone. I mean you should have saw my teenage rebellion, I almost leveled a continent and by the end my village was a hole in the ground and I decided to join the army. This fight with pain wasn't exactly a teenage rebellion and never actually joined the allied shinobi forces, but who cared enough to correct him? Nobody alive for sure. Mira giggled, you're a great guy Naruto. You know you never took me bikini shopping. Oh I didn't. Yeah I should fight you for misleading me, I really want to see your battle form again. Laxus came out a few minutes later. The noise ended again. Naruto walked up, did it happen? Yes. He let out a low chuckle, a sad one, a shame. But it won't put a damper on the amigos. Really? Naruto gave a thumbs up and smiled, just because you're being excommunicated doesn't mean you can slack off. Someone has to give you missions. So I'll be the link between you and home. I can call. Nope. Too boring. Yeah, Laxus was confronted by Natsu, who couldn't speak clearly due to the bandages across his mouth. 
Natsu said some incoherent stuff, but Naruto, Gajiel, and Laxus could understand it. That time wasn't fair, but next time. Next time would be a one-on-one. -on -one. And the strongest will truly be shown. And as he got to the door, Laxus held his arm up as a backwards wave, I'll be seeing ya. Naruto waved back, knowing that Laxus couldn't even see it. It really made him sad, he was a bit like Sasuke, a good kid until family drove him bad. He found out what happened with Ivan when he was inside of Makarov's mind. But luckily it didn't seem like Laxus would get a evil hickey from a 50-year-old criminal and dress like a male prostitute. And even after you are excommunicated, we still meet. Naruto. Why are you here? Hey. You were the banished one. I mean. Why in the alley with me and not in the parade? Naruto laughed, clone. Oh. You'd make a good attraction in this. The clone noted while watching the festival. I would. The clone nodded, with those rock star pants and flashy powers, the people would love it. Maybe next year. Yeah maybe. The clone grinned, just wait for my part. What are you doing? The Jadama. The deadly orb flew into the sky. Laxus watched it travel, that is overkill. I never get to use that as much as I want. Because it's big and fucking insane. Call me a show off, because I am. The entire night sky was set alight. The clone looked at him, one last thing, look at the parade one last time. A proper sending off. He vanished in smoke. Laxus turned, and his eyes widened. As the light illuminated the city all the members of Fairy Tail were pointing to the sky, their palms behind them. The sign of Fairy Tail, meaning, I'll always be watching you. And under the light of the Bijadama, Laxus left the city of Magnolia crying, crying tears of both joy and sadness. Naruto actually trusted governments. Despite the natural paranoia and instinctual distrust embedded by his ninja training, he felt that he could believe in the government and what they do. Because if there was any more corrupt shit in the government he would be a part of it, he was already a part of a lot of conspiracies and cover-ups, a part of his job as the Yellow Flash. All of the corruption in the system he knew or had a hand in, so it was unlikely there was any deeper than he already was. But now now he was doubting the legal system. How does the most powerful agency in the world, the government, lose a person? They lost Jell. Lost Jell. He could tell that it wasn't an easy easy hush hush operation where a person that they didn't like suddenly vanished. It was literally someone vanishing, not dead, just gone and they didn't know how. Somehow, between the five minutes checks and constant surveillance of the heaviest prison in the world, Jell just went poof, simply gone. I need to ask you something, Naruto said as he flashed to Ikaruga's location, which was her room in the Death's Head Caucus Guild. She rose an eyebrow from her sleeping position, it was late. Oh, what is it? How much does your guild like me? She slipped out of her bed and stood up, they like the money I'm bringing in from filming, and they heard of your exploits, so I say enough. Naruto laid down onto her now vacant bed, good. I need info. Info on what exactly? Naruto adjusted his head on her pillow. This is nice, he observed. It's Egyptian cotton, one of the best. She sat back down on her bed and laid down next to him. Hmm, is Egyptian a company? I think. Interesting, anyways, the question. What is it? Jell was taken from prison, not broken out, taken. He wasn't the one to willingly break out, he honored his sentence and very clearly said he would see it through, honor being the only thing he had left. Ikaruga didn't seem very shocked, not that Naruto could see as he was staring at the ceiling, but he could feel her reaction, or rather lack of. I was going to tell you about that tomorrow, after I woke up. Well this saves time. We've been searching around, she started, we definitely meant her guild, and we have narrowed it down to a few possible suspects. Which are, she rolled onto her stomach and propped her elbows on the bed, cradling her head by the chin with her hands, either dark slash, swallow, raven tail even though it's unlikely, one of the members of the Balam Alliance, or, worse than the Balam Alliance, don't tell me, it's unlikely, but there is that guild, how unlikely? He didn't like the thought of confronting that guild. She slid up to him and rested her head on the same pillow, unlikely enough. Her voice was a whisper, not wanting to say that guild's name any louder than she has to, but for something like making a man vanish from a prison, it takes skill. Skill that they definitely have. But they have no need for Jell, it's most likely the other ones. Raven Tail possibly, but Gajiel is spying on them. We would know. Oh? Gajiel Red Fox hasn't betrayed Fairy Tail. He's a double agent, she nodded slowly, I'll report that to my higher-ups later. Naruto didn't really care what they knew, in a way's fairy tale and Death's Head Caucus had an alliance of a sort. The lucrative relationship between him and Ikaruga brought in a rather large amount of money to the guild, and Death's Head Caucus didn't want to ruin the cash influx for no reason. They also knew who he was through Ikaruga, which was more than enough incentive to be his ally rather than foe. I'm gonna hope that that guild isn't involved with his disappearance. They probably aren't. Then who? He questioned, to the ceiling more than her. 
Ikaruga let out a thoughtful hum, it could be dark slash, because we have no idea what those guys do. They are all insane. Insane and unpredictable. Yeah, but it was stealthy, too stealthy for those crazy fuckers. Swallow could be the one, I doubt it. When did Jell ever had an encounter with the Mafia? Besides, they're not as prominent in Fiori as they are in Bosco or Minstrel, they practically own Stella also. Swallow, not much of a cliché dark guild, unbelievably organized. All of it a giant pyramid of grunts, bribes, hired hits, all leading to the kingpin at the top. All of it built with enough traps and fail-safes to make even the trickiest of ones fall. They ran the slave trade in Bosco and the cities of Minstrel, they were everywhere. Seagrain could have, I know that Swallow definitely has people inside of the all the prisons in even Fiori, especially one as big as the the slab. What would they get from him though? And be realistic. Naruto paused for a moment, realistically. I'd say nothing. They could have kidnapped him to experiment for Zara for his magic, but it was proven that it was Altier manipulating him and not Zaref. And his magic, despite being rare, could be found somewhere a lot easier to access. Dark Slash, a mostly Pergrin guild, and Swallow, whose headquarters are said to be in Minstrel, are probably not the ones coming all the way to Fiori to get Jell. They are options, but probably not. Alum Alliance and Raven Tail are in Fiori, I wouldn't put it past Ivan, but Makarov would have told me when he got some info a few days back. Alum Alliance it is. Naruto tilted his head to look at her, but who? She pushed him slightly, you're on top of my blanket, it's cold. Naruto moved slightly, this is, Kalem, is it? The weather was always a bit off in Kalem, especially in summer. It's storm season, so it's all kinds of fucked up here. She pulled the blanket over the both of them, this is a secondary base, not as good as the main one. But I like this one a lot more during the spring. Anyways, Balam. She pressed up against him. You're warm, she noted. I'm always hot. In both ways. The power of the chakra flowing through him made his body temperature warmer than usual, he could adjust it at will though. Nobody has any idea what the hell is going on in Tartaros, she got back on topic, so I doubted. Yeah, Naruto sounded a bit lost, yeah, Tartaros out. Grimware Heart has had a steady activity level, Aration says has been showing an increased activity level now that I think of it. Not Grimware Heart, I just ran into Ultior and her gang a few days ago on a job, she was being an annoying brat, all smug about playing me at the council, and more intent on finding Zaref than taking Jell, she has no need for him anymore. I assume you made them cower in fear. Why would you say that? Her voice was amused, you didn't sound very enjoyed in seeing her, and I know you're not one to be held back on what you do. It sounds like she interrupted your job. Hey. The vocal equivalent of a shrug, I made them run in fear, not cower. I was not in the mood to be messed with. Oh I remember, we filmed that night, wow. She shivered at the thought. Naruto chuckled for a moment, Aration says, aren't they a small guild? Yeah. But they are a quality over quantity type of guild. Naruto thought for a moment, well, well it's my time to go and do my own investigating. He disappeared in a flash of orange. Ikaruga frowned and then sighed, shame, I was getting comfortable. And so, we are teaming up to fight Aration says. Makarov paused to let the word sink into the group in the guild hall, he silently nodded in approval at Reedus's diagram of the Balam Alliance and their connections to other dark guilds. Good. A hand patted him on the shoulder, making him jump. Oh Naruto. Mira said with a smile, you're back from, from whatever. Naruto had an unnaturally serious tone to him, I was doing my own recon. And it turns out our interests are the same. Makarov turned to him, noticing the red devil seriousness and slight evil coming off him. And the interests are, Horatian says. Naruto stared at the drawing, a close friend of mine was kidnapped and they're high on the perpetrator list. So I'm gonna go and slowly tear all of them into little pieces, if they have him or not. The entire hall froze at the malice coming off of him, happy flew by the redeed, Naruto, your evil is showing. Oh. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, oops. Lucy chuckled nervously, it's all fine. Makarov shook his head, I can't let you kill them, despite Aration says being a dark guild, the new council is already looking for ways to turn us over without Yajima in it anymore. So? Naruto's tone turned a bit dark again, I'll show them if they try. Happy flew by again, Naruto, oops. Makarov looked thoughtful, so will you join the group we are sending? I will, he replied with a nod, though I will meet up with them at the meeting point on my own accord, I need to do something. How will you know? Who are you sending? Makarov paused for a moment, team, team Urza. I can track Urza from anywhere on the planet, call it a brotherly intuition. He turned around and walked away, leaving them silent. He can track me, Urza started to nod slowly, what a good brother. Lucy looked at her strangely, of course you're the only one in the world willing to have no privacy at all. Sir, you cannot enter a meeting without proper clearance. Naruto frowned, who was this guard? Are you new? 
The guard looked at him strangely, yes, look. I go in and out of the council when I please. I've been doing it for years. Well sir this is a new council and. Naruto's eyes turned red and the guard collapsed, he was not in the mood for games today. He walked into the council, the current room being used, while the actual building was being rebuilt, was the grand courthouse of Fiori. He personally liked the look more than the old council room, it wasn't as dark and secretive, the courthouse was brightly lit and no details were hidden. Hopefully the council would reflect the characteristics of the room. Who are you? A man thundered as he approached. Naruto sighed, there was already an alpha in the council. He idly stood there as hundreds of guards rushed in and surrounded him. I am Naruto Namikaze. He could literally feel the stiffness enter the council, the lead one managed to speak after a few moments, you, you are him. The spear poked him sightly, Naruto glared, I recommend you have your soldiers avoid doing that again, it will end bad for the entire continent otherwise. The alpha, which Naruto decided to call him due to lack of name, slowly spoke, what are you doing here? I came to speak, and I am not liking the hospitality you've been showing at the moment. What do you want? He was talking slowly, hesitantly. Why are you so afraid? I'm part of the government in the way, I did, and sometimes still do, all of your dirty work. I should be an honored guest because I like showing my face here and will most likely come often. Alpha glared, don't think we have no counters for you, devil. Wow. Naruto grabbed his chest, that aches my heart. Anyways, you lost a prisoner a few days ago. What? Alpha yelled, how do you know this? He was poked again, Naruto stared at the man who did it, boy. Stop it. He turned back to the council. Of course I know, I know all of your secrets. What do you want? You keep asking that, it's simple. I want to tell you that I know one of the possible perpetrators and I am willing to tell you who it could be. The tension in the council eased. You will? Alpha asked. I still do the council favors because they will owe me some in return. Since the old council is gone so are all of my favors, so I'm starting over with one. The Balam Alliance, my sources indicate that they are the only Fiori-based guilds capable in capturing him. Another man next to Alpha, now dubbed Beta, snorted, you needed sources to tell you that they're the strongest. Naruto glared, no. My sources are to tell me who did it, something that you guys have no idea on. So unless you fucking useless pricks can actually protect your high-value prisoner you should shut the fuck up. He turned to the man poking him, die. The man collapsed. The entire room was frozen in his killing intent. Naruto sighed after a few moments, look. I'm just upset that Jell was kidnapped under your noses, I'll give you the info. Oh and I didn't kill the man, only knocked him unconscious he was annoying. We apologize, Alpha said, not wanting anything nuclear. Naruto nodded approvingly, good, the other pricks never apologized. Anyways, Oration says are showing increased activity, and also from my reports Grimmer Heart is not interested in doing anything major soon. There is an alliance between guilds going to assault Oration says, Fairy Tail is one of them. Yes, I know. I am one of the people going to attack them, consider this another favor, taking out one of the biggest thorns in your sides. You are one of the biggest thorns in our sides. Naruto shook his head, then my poison heals. Because all I've done for this government is save their asses. Oh, and next time make your guards know me. Because I will kill anyone who pokes me next time. He disappeared in a flash of red, and all of the people in the room released a breath of relief. Now, you must be tired from your journey. Hibiki, one of the trimen, gave them, Lucy and Urza, their current seduction targets, a smile. Spend the night with us. The two female fairy tail mages just blinked, unable to comprehend where they got the couches, fancy drinks, sparkly lights, or smooth jazz music from. Who the fuck are you? The entire room turned to the door, where a tall retreat in a white and red coat stood. Urza lit up, Naruto. The trimen turned, Naruto. Eve questioned, is he a boyfriend? Urza turned to him, he's my older brother, you don't see the resemblance. Before they could answer Naruto walked forward, his violet eyes gleaming dangerously, we both have amazing red hair, it's pretty easy to see. Now, tell me, what the fuck are you trying to do to my precious little sister? The trimen, despite being nothing but flirts, knew the code of womanizing very well. When there's a brother like Naruto there was only one plan, GTFO, get the fuck out. Sorry, Hibiki injected smoothly, it is just that your sister is so dazzling, our inner man was just dying to speak to her. Naruto nodded slyly, oh I understand. His tone became more friendly, are you guys connoisseurs of women also? We are. Hibiki nodded to him, well as man to man we'll try to honor you and not flirt with your sister, there might be moments though, well try to restrain yourselves. Naruto walked over to the couch Urza was on. Move kid. He told Eve, who scrambled away, he sat down with a groan, this is a nice couch, are you done with your business? Urza asked. 
I am, threatened the council, asserted my authority over the new leaders all the usual stuff, we won't get smoked for doing this. Lucy stared appalled, you, you threatened the council. Well of course. Naruto just stared at her blankly, I mean they're assholes, I wasn't going to bribe them like I did the last one. You bribed the last council. He shrugged, not with money, but I did their work for them in exchange for a few things. He did a few cleanup jobs, after he joined Fairy Tail, simple things to make sure he stayed on their minds. Urza. A silky smooth voice rung from on top of the staircase, them being in Bob's beautiful villa. Naruto noticed that Urza was deathly still, her skin tone losing color. Who would do that to Urza of all people? She was a baddest no fear crazy motherfucker. Stay right where you are. The voice inquired, because I am here, my honey. Naruto, after making people go deathly still the entire day, finally froze himself. Aichiya, Urza said weakly. It's been a while, you, you're joining us. I am, I've been longing to see you. He revealed himself, my honey. He revealed himself to everyone, not Naruto though since he was still frozen on the couch, but he could sense it, he could sense the ugly. Urchiya's girlfriend. The trimen all bowed, our forgiveness. No. I deny it with all of my might. Naruto felt a scent enter his sensitive nose, making his head explode in pain. Exiting parfum. Ichiya said smoothly. He spoke French. What the hell? Wait, he knew what that scent was, we're not here to play. Ichiya yelled to the trimen, clean up. Naruto finally rose, his anger reaching heights never set before. The pure rage in him was at its highest, in all of his hundreds of years of living he never, never, do. He seethed, turning around slowly, who the fuck is sending pheromones to my sister? Pheromones. Lucy turned to him, what do you mean pheromones? You. Naruto finally got his first look at Ichiya, and he was, well he was quite the sight. You, you motherfucker. Whatever parfum you're using has pheromones to make girls horny in it. You dare do that to my sister. Lucy and Urza's blood stopped, they just stared as a dark shadow rose from Naruto. You could smell that. Ichiya's already narrow eyes narrow even more. Who are you? I'm the yellow fucking flash. And she he pointed at Urza, is my innocent baby sister. And I will kill anyone who dares sexually harass her. The entire blue pegasus group just stared at him shocked. You're the one, the one the new council just labeled SS. Naruto blinked, they did. Before he smirked, so they did, the new council just earned a hell of a lot more awesome points with him, from pricks to assholes, which was an improvement in his books. Urza the bastard actually had the gall to approach his sister. Your parfum is he sniffed her. Get away from me. Urza punted the midget like a football, sending him flying to the door. Only to be frozen. These people think they can compare to Lamia scale. A voice asked to no one in particular. Naruto noticed Grey freezing, get if, freezing, and approached Urza, placing a hand on her shoulder and pulling her into a half embrace. Look Urza, he started, I know it's illegal and all but, he brought his mouth to her ear, they will never find the body. Urza whispered back, Naruto, I appreciate your concern, but he's part of Bob's guild and he's useful, so you can't. Ah well. Naruto patted her head. I'll still skewer them if they touch you. He suddenly twitched, his sexy woman senses went tingling. He looked at the door, well hello there. He, in literally less than a millisecond, appeared at the door, next to the girl who appeared. Who are you miss? She blinked in surprise, eh, uh, Sherry. Naruto looked at her but confused, I remember you from somewhere, you do? Yes, I was, oh. He remembered. You two were on that island. With Deliora. What? The white-haired man said in shock. You were there. I didn't see you. Eh. Nobody saw me, it was a simple observation in case, that idiot he pointed to Natsu, went out of hand with the S-rank mission he stole. That wasn't the reason, but it was a good excuse. Oh, I'm lying by the way. Naruto nodded and shook his hand. Naruto. He looked around the room, where everyone seemed to be in an argument, these people sure are loud aren't they? Yes. Another new voice, and they should all shut up. The play silenced at the authority in the new man's voice, we are making an alliance to defeat Oration says. So stop fighting each other. Naruto whistled, impressed at the sight in front of him. Damn. The ace of Lamia scale, one of the backstreet boys, whoever they were, said. Juranikus. Naruto, who was the unvoted leader of Team Fairy Tail, extended his hand. Naruto Namikaze, it's nice to meet you Jura. The man's hand was huge compared to his, but strengths of their grips were equal. I've heard of you, Yellow Flash. And me too, Wizard Saint. Naruto idly stared at the ceiling, I wonder why I'm not a wizard saint I'm definitely in the top 10 strongest in the world, actually like top 3 him, Zeref, and Aknologia were the top 3 humans, pseudo-humans counted, in the world. I've heard you are unpredictable, along with being slightly insane and evil. I'm only evil at times, usually when I'm really annoyed, for example when someone tries to flirt with my sister. And insane. 
I'd like to say misunderstood, I get it. Somehow Naruto thinks he didn't. Anyways, three of the guild have arrived. We wait for Kate's shelter. I heard they're only sending one person, Ugly, who was Ichiya, but Naruto decided Ugly was more appropriate, said. What? How crazy strong is that guy then, Lucy sounded scared, still being pretty civilian. The sound of a thud alerted them, oh, a sad voice, Naruto turned around, a smile forming at the voice. I the little girl said, I'm from Kate's shelter. Wendy Chan. Naruto stepped forward, good to see you. Naruto. She yelled happily, running towards and throwing herself at him, Naruto hugged her and span her around, how are you kiddo? Yes, he didn't tell Grandini that he knew her when they spoke because he knew she would never shut up and would have kept him inside of Natsu's body to talk about her, something that he couldn't let happen. I'm great. She patted his cheek, how about you? You were pretty hurt the last time I saw you. I'm fine. You did a good job helping me. She had been the one who healed him after he absorbed Ethereum. Where's your Naruto placed a hand on her mouth? SHH, you know he doesn't like it when you yell his name. He's on a mission, I'll make sure he sees you soon though. She nodded excitedly at the thought of seeing Mystigan. Who is that? He heard someone question, bringing his and Wendy's attention back to the group who was staring and muttering about the girl. Wendy froze at all of the people staring at her and buried her head into Naruto's neck. Hey hey, he soothed before turning to the group, hey. She's shy. Stop making her uncomfortable. What was Kate Shelter thinking? Sherry muttered quietly, sending one child, hey. Naruto smiled at the hopefully last new voice, she's not the only one they sent miss. Too much makeup. Carla. Wendy yelled, you followed me. Of course. I'd be far too worried if you went alone. The white exceed, flying cat, looked at Naruto, but if I knew you were here I'd be fine. Good to see you Carla. He let Wendy down and Carla made her way over to her. Wendy seemingly became ultra shy now that she was away from Naruto, even though the redeed was literally two feet from her. She went back into her recluse state, eyes down and almost looking in the brink of tears. Oh, I apologize. Urza started to approach. I was a bit taken aback at fist, but I apologize for making you uncomfortable. Naruto smiled, you see her? She's my sister. She's the nicest lady you'll see ever. Really? Yes, she is my sister. How can she be bad? Nobody in the crowd wanted to mention the absolutely deadly mood he was in a few minutes ago or how he was just talking about bribing and threatening the government. Urza Scarlet Wendy was in awe, it's really her. She seems better than I thought. Carla would be partial to her for being nice to Wendy. Wendy took a tentative step forward before hugging Urza's leg. The Titania smiled as she patted her head. So Naruto, do you know about she looked at Wendy and back to him. Naruto smirked at what Urza was implying. Wendy-chan is adorable isn't she? She's a real special gal, so very unique so no need to be shy. Jura and Ugly seemed to get the undertones of his statement, the Malong Urza sensing the power from the small girl. He looked down to Wend Wait. She was gone. Seriously, you are so cute. Death was in Naruto's eyes at one of the trimen said that. The three of them were currently tending to Wendy on the couch. You. Naruto stomped over, you don't say that to a 12-year-old girl you pedo fuck. Hey. He yelled back. You said she was cute. I said she was cute yes. But I know what you mean by cute and it's illegal he turned to look at Wendy, Wendy, you need to change that dress. It's too short. I she shook, I I I I sorry. Get the hell away from her. Naruto slapped the tripedos, newly dubbed, away and embraced Wendy. They're there. The bad men are gone, he's even more protective to her than Urza. Gray muttered to Natsu, who nodded slowly, still trying to think of where he heard Wendy from. The plan. Ugly took a few poses as he spoke. I shall explain it. He suddenly froze after I examined the bathroom parfum. The Worth Wood Sea spreads from out here to the north, Ugly explained. Ancient people sealed an extremely powerful magical spell inside of Wood Sea. He took another pose, its name is Nirvana. Naruto stopped breathing, Nirvana. Natsu and Lucy both questioned. I have never heard of it. Lion added. Sherry turned to Jura, have you Jura? No. I have not heard of it. Urza turned to Naruto, have you? Nar Naruto. Her voice became alarmed. They all turned to look at him. The redeed sat on the floor cradling his head, they could hear the mutter of no no no, on shit fuck damn and other words being muttered over and over. Uh, Naruto, Is this because of Nirvana? Naruto sighed, yes, I know of Nirvana. And I want to know who is stupid enough to want it. Does Oration says not know what it will do to the world? What is it? Lion asked, but Naruto had returned to his mantra and didn't seem responsive. Ugly answered, I know that it is powerful and destructive enough for the ancients to have sealed it away. That is all we know at the moment. Naruto stood up, it's worse than destructive. Cataclysmic might not even begin. Urza looked concerned, what is it? Ethereum is child's play compared to Nirvana. 
His answer was cryptic, I would rather take an abyss break to the face than deal with goddamn nirvana, literally the gods damned it. What is it? Naruto's face was distant, we need to go right now. They cannot get it. Wait. Hibiki yelled before Naruto could walk out, I have info. Naruto stopped and approached him, good. Any info could help. Hibiki used his archive magic to bring up videos in midair. Naruto stared amazed, Chakra could not do that, the man who uses a snake, Cobra. The defining thing of the picture was the huge purple snake coiled around him. Naruto looked at it a bit nostalgic, Manda much. He uses speed magic as his name implies racer. His face wasn't visible, but the destruction seemingly caused by him was. He has the power to wipe out an entire military unit and will if there's profit in it. Hot eye of the heavenly eye. He was, words couldn't describe what was wrong with that guy's face. The woman said to peer into your heart angel. Slutty costume a plus. We don't have much info on this guy, but he's called Midnight. Flying carpet. That was really, magical. And the control center of them all. A huge black man in a fur-rimmed coat, brain. He was, huge. Huge and, well in all of his years of traveling the last time he saw a dark-skinned man in charge, was the Raikage, it was nice to finally see some diversity among the groups of Earthland. Each of them holds magical power strong enough to wipe out guilds at a time. So we will use our numbers as an advantage. Naruto patted the nervous Wendy on the head, don't worry kiddo, I'm here to protect you. Ugly stepped forwards, no need to worry. Our plan does not need to involve fighting. All we need to do is find their base. Ah yes, we haven't told them, the pedo who called Wendy cute said. We've conjectured that they have a temporary base somewhere in the woodsy. The kid of the trimen added. Ugly did another pose, if possible, I want all of the information of their base we can get. Urza tapped her armor and thought, what will we do, if they're all there? Ugly pointed up, we will use the pride and joy of our guild, Christina, the Pegasus, and together with it wipe the guild off the face of this planet. A picture of a giant blimp outfitted with wings and weapons appeared. Naruto pursed his lips, wipe it off the face of this planet sounded like they wanted to kill Eurasian says, so why was he banned from ripping them to shreds? Are you ready? Jura asked. And if we get into a battle do not fight alone under any circumstances. Naruto didn't want to tell him, but he would probably break that rule. Leave Wendy and Urza together, since they would kick ass as a team, go to the leader, beat the shit out of him, find Jell, and wipe Nirvana out of this planet forever. The simple plan that would probably go to shit, because it always goes to shit. Ah Jura, it was best to at least try to get permission. Yes. There's 15 of us, an odd number, 15. Naruto pointed the cats, they can be useful, actually Carla can be useful. 14 it is. Hey. Happy was offended. Right. I'm all fired up. Natsu smoked a little, I'll fight all of them at once. He rushed out in the general direction of the forest, blowing the door open. Let's go. Urza rushed after him, Grey and a crying Lucy following. I can't be one up by fairy tale, come on Sherry. Lion and Sherry ran out, the Trimen following. Happy ran up to Carla and Wendy, no need to worry, I'm here. Carla grabbed Wendy and ran away from Happy. It looks like this operation is starting, Jura said as he stepped out of the villa. It has. Ugly stepped out also, say Jura, I have heard that you are one of the ten wizard saints, indeed I am. And are you powerful enough to rival even Master Makarov? Makarov was one of the most critically acclaimed of the saints. Oh not even close. Jura said, being honest, not modest. Out of all of those bestowed the title of wizard saint by the council, I am the weakest. We may have the same title, but to compare me to Makarov, it's like the difference between heaven and earth. Oh, that's good ugly pop the cap of a vial, a reddish smoke came out. Eh. Uh, Jura dropped his staff, what is this? The parfum that saps the fighting spirit out of someone, Jura looked weak, Ichiya, what is the meaning of this? Ugly popped another vial, and Jura started to scream absolute murder. A scent that stimulates every sensation of pain in the body. His voice started to become double as Jura collapsed, two strange doll-like things replaced Ugly's body. Finally. One of them said. That Ichi fellow only ever thought about pervy stuff. Seriously? Said the other one. What a worthless adult. What? Jura tried to rise, what is this? Now now, a new person stepped in front of him, Angel. Oh, I just copied that dirty little man. She winked, and thanks to, that I know your entire plan. Jura stared in shock. Now? We got two of them down. Jura collapsed. Don't get in out way, children of light naughty children who gets in our way will face Angel's judgment. That sounds kinky. Angel and her dolls froze and looked at the doorway where Naruto was leaning, his eyes having orange rims around it. I noticed three extra presences around 30 minutes ago. Honestly, a man doesn't take 20 minutes to take a shit. 
Her eyes narrowed, the yellow flash. You should have checked if everyone was gone, you might have gotten me also he snorted, not. Such a trick I learned to combat literally decades ago. She drew a key, I you're not gonna like this. On the inside she was scared, the yellow flash was labeled SS with a flea on site instruction. The only other person like that was the famed red devil. Naruto smirked, a celestial key user. Interesting. Are you gonna fight? No. Naruto's response shocked her, I'd rather not fight a pretty girl and call me sexist if you want. But I do want to know what you want Nirvana for, you know what is Doe's right. You know what Nirvana is. Naruto looked at her dangerously, I do. And I know exactly what it does. Now tell me, do you? Angel spread her wings. Nope. Naruto appeared behind her and grabbed her arm in a yellow flash. He leaned forward to whisper in her ear, you don't understand what you're trifling with you call yourself angel, so you should know that the gods forsaken nirvana if you activate it, you're gonna be a fallen angel. He let go, and she flew away. Though, he said quietly. Go and warn them that you are all out of your league. He looked in the sky to the Christina as it was shot out of the sky. Actually angel yelled as her wing was pegged. She yelled again as in a rush she found herself in Naruto's arm, I don't want you to tell them the message, I'll deliver it myself. What are you? Naruto smirked at her, a demon. And So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.